So the M1 MacBook Air is approaching on four and a half years this coming month, and it's crazy to think that not only one generation of MacBooks have released since then, but two, the M2 and the M3. But now in 2024, is the M1 MacBook Air still a smart and valuable buy even all these years later? But most importantly, how does the performance of this machine still hold up for everyday tasks and even some light to moderate productivity work? So for almost two years now, I've been using my M1 MacBook Air every single day for school, work, consuming media, and even some light gaming. And I can confidently say that I've had zero issues on this machine. Okay, so now let's look at the design of the MacBook. As soon as you look at it, you can tell that it's built for portability. And while only weighing in at just under three pounds, I've had no issues taking it to school, traveling, or just working at home with it. The exterior is a premium feeling aluminum chassis that doesn't seem to scratch much. Over the time I've had this machine, the only scratch I have is right next to the trackpad, where I drop something very heavy on it, but that's not something most people will be doing. The bottom of the MacBook, however, does seem to scratch quite a bit, but you won't really notice that on a daily basis. The bottom also has four silicone feet that hold it nicely secured on most surfaces as well. The camera is 720p and should be more than sufficient for almost everyone. The quality is about average for a laptop. I mean, it's not amazing, it's not the worst thing in the world. That also goes to the mic as well, which is a lot better than I was expecting. The speakers are also extremely good for being such low profile with ample bass and sound clarity. They are absolutely fine for any type of content or content creation. For music production however, which I do often, you will benefit from using a 3.5mm headphone jack or just getting some good sound quality headphones. As for the keyboard, it feels absolutely amazing to type on. All the keys are nice and satisfying to type on, while not being too loud that you will disturb every single person around you, like a mechanical keyboard. The battery life is another place where this laptop destroys the competition. Apple says it will get up to around 15 hours of wireless web surfing, and I think they're probably pretty accurate with that. I bring my device to school almost every single day and never have to charge it midday. I also use it to charge my phone and AirPods while out. I usually finish the day with around 55-60% to 60 battery life remaining, even after using it for hours each day. The performance, however, is somewhere where this laptop absolutely crushes the competition at this price point. And while yes, the newer MacBook Airs will have higher sitter bench scores, you will be absolutely hard pressed to tell the difference between them. As I said before, I edit videos and game design on this machine and I have found it to be almost as fast as my desktop PC which is rocking a 5600 and a 3060 Ti. As for timeline performance on DaVinci Resolve, it is absolutely flawless with no frame drops or anything. Even with color grading and plugins like RSMB, there's been absolutely no performance tank on the timeline. So here, I have a 3 minute long 4K 60fps render and the M1 MacBook Air managed to export in just under 9 minutes, while my desktop managed just under 8. So overall, absolutely amazing performance coming from such a small and lightweight device. So the screen is somewhere where this is absolutely exceptional. It's 13 inches with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and it looks absolutely amazing with great color accuracy and vibrancy. Although if you're sitting outside or just somewhere with really bright lights, even at the max screen brightness, it may not be enough for you. The baseline M1 MacBook Air does only come with a 256GB SSD, which is not exactly the worst case since MacBooks tend to be better than Windows laptops on storage management. But as somebody who does work and create content on this machine, I can say it is a bit of a hassle if you do not have an external SSD. Lucky for me, I do have an external SSD which I offload all my files on and off of, but without it, it would be a major hassle. 